Hello, my friends. I'm making this at the request of some of my dear friends who want to wanted something to give to people to be able to explain what limbic system impairment is. So the first thing I want to say is that limbic system impairment is a term that was coined by Annie Hopper, who created DNRS. As far as I know, that is who coined that term. I could be wrong. I just want to put credit where credit is due. I am not affiliated with DNRS at all. I had my own journey of recovery. That's where I started, but I branched away from there pretty quickly. So this is my personal um, definition as a coach, an independent coach, not associated, not affiliated with any, any particular program or anything like that. Um, so here we go, let's jump in. So what happens with a person, so limbic system impairment, um, we're gonna use that term because that's what most of my clients use, is when we have a series of events that occurs in a person's life that creates a level of stress that impairs the emotional aspect of the brain. That is your limbic system. So we have an impaired limbic system, so this is your emotional center, and it's responsible for your level of stress and the state of your nervous system. It's very, very closely tied to the nervous system. And what happens is the stress switch that is meant to only turn on when we are actually in danger for about two minutes and then turn back off gets stuck on on and it stays there for weeks months years decades and our body systems none of them are designed to run on stress chemistry they are all designed to run on relaxation chemistry positive neurochemistry and we end up instead with what happens when you're in stress chemistry because it's meant to be you know you get your chance to fight flee or freeze and then either you survive or you die and that happens very quickly so during that time our body chemistry is pointed away from things like digestion and assimilation of nutrients and relaxation and your blood flow kind of uh it stays in mainly your your organs you know protecting your life so it stays you know you're not going to have blood flow to your extremities there's a lot of neurological things that can go quite haywire if you're not in relaxation chemistry your digestive your digestion turns off um, your blood pressure can spike or drop or be elevated for so long that it then starts to drop randomly pretty much the bottom line is that any all body systems get affected you can have mental illness you can have depression and anxiety you can have PTSD, you can have um, acute or chronic or you know, widespread chronic pain, ongoing pain that has no, you know, so fibromyalgia would fall under there. Um, you can end up a lot of times, and so what happens when this happens is with that on, there's all of this fear chemistry in the limbic system, this part of the brain that's responsible for our emotions and making, helping us make sense of what's happening is like um, it needs to understand it needs to attribute a reason why all of this is happening and so it looks to exterior things like what was present and this is part of this is another part of what your nervous system is doing is gauging what was present when that critical tipping point happened in, your, in the perfect storm what and it will scan the it's always scanning the environment our nervous systems are, are taking in you know our brains and nervous systems are processing an absurd amount of information and making stories and making sense of it all the time and because we're trying to find the reason for what's happening the brain uh, the brain will be attributing the dysfunction in the body because of the stress switch that got stuck on on to the chemicals that were present or the foods that were present or the people or the environment whether it's that particular environment or environments like that and that creates that's the cross wiring in the brain so we have this association or this inaccurate attribution of who's the bad guy what's causing the symptoms um, and one of the patterns often here is searching for reasons. That's one of the biggest patterns people have in, in this is that the, the brain is constantly searching for the next thing to try to pinpoint their symptoms on because we need to make sense of what's happening to feel any kind of sense of safety, which you have no sense of when your brain is in that stress state. You're, that's, you're looking for an answer so that you can feel safe. If I know what's creating this, then at least I know I can feel safe. So um, there can be a lot of that going on and again, 
so many slews of diagnoses fall in this category for chronic illness. Um, MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome, MCS, um, multiple chemical sensitivity, again, and just a wide variety of things people don't talk about, random odd symptoms that make no sense, uh, lots of neurological symptoms akin to multiple sclerosis, um, so many different things, so many different things can happen because your body is essentially being fried in stress chemistry for a long time. And what happens again, your, your digestion breaks down. So you start to have digestive symptoms. You stop, you lose your ability to sleep usually. I mean, it's just, it goes so far, the, the, um, the effects of this. And those of us who are practicing recovery, I mean, Again, your survival instinct, it, the, the brain really believes that it's keeping us alive by keeping us stuck in this fear chemistry once this has happened. It really thinks fear is going to keep us safe because we're, when we're in a survival situation, being in that heightened state does actually help you survive if you're actually in a life-threatening situation. And with this case, you're not, but the brain is convinced that you are. And that's what creates this. It's, it's a very um, grueling experience to recover because we are constantly, constantly trying to help our brain and body understand that everything's okay and we don't need to be on alert and the, the symptoms we experience are incredibly uncomfortable and you may go um, years or decades without being able to eat or sleep in any kind of normal way or feel safe in even a basic way. I mean, it is a hell that it cannot be described and most people I work with wouldn't wish it on their worst enemies and neither would I. So, um, and I, I've been through this myself, um, if that's not obvious. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty extreme. It's, it's pretty excruciating to go through and it takes a lot of love and a lot of patience and a lot of discipline and um, interior grit and strength and willingness to really act into new patterns to rewire the brain and heal. So um, that's your kind of general spread of what this is. And because the limbic system is so actively looking for a threat, it believes that there is a bad guy out there who is out to get you. So when we talk about anything negative, oftentimes the limbic system will grab onto that and then obsess about it being like, oh my God, maybe this is the bad guy. Maybe this terrible thing's going to happen. And it just kind of takes it and runs with it. So if you are, um, spending time with someone who is in recovery from this, be gentle with them as much as you can, offer them as much compassion and space and willingness to understand or offer compassion for something that you don't understand. Know that this is very, very real. And um, these people are doing the absolute best they can and they're they're, they're doing such courageous things to help work with their system to bring themselves back to equilibrium and teach the brain that, hey, everything's okay. We don't need to be in this frenzy. The symptoms are not a threat. There is no threat, everything's okay. And it's, um, it's a pretty Heraculean feat. So just be as gentle as you can and know that it will, it will be received with much gratitude. And it's okay not to understand fully, but that's part of why people will often ask for, you know, conversation topics to be not about certain things or more about other things to um, allow them to keep moving forward and not get stuck in um, <laughs> this, this, little, this little part of them that's like, oh, negativity, let's just take this and run with it. So um, and just a, a deep, sincere thank you from anyone who is watching this video for taking the time to educate yourself about this on any level. It is the most loving and kind and compassionate and courageous and just beautiful act you can do for someone to take the time to understand what they're going through that is everything. So if you are a loved one watching this from the bottom of my heart on behalf of everyone who has limbic system impairment, thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit about this and give your loved ones an experience of compassion and space, space holding for them. So I hope this has been helpful. So much love to all of you, my friends and their loved ones. And because it's Christmas time, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I will see you all soon.